Hello, everybody. Joe Malone coming to you live on Dallas Trading Floor. Hey, uh, today it's uh, interesting. We are seeing a nice rally in some of the semiconductor stocks. And I want to kind of start out the program today kind of showing you what I've been doing uh, with regards to the market. Interestingly enough, uh, the FANG stocks and the semiconductor stocks are starting to show a significant rally. And the interesting thing here is that I think that we have some potential opportunities in the market. And I do think this is true. Now, here's one of the reasons I want to show you why I believe that we do have this opportunity in the market right now. Uh, and it does look like finally we're starting to see at least some kind of an uptrend. Now, it's not nothing is guaranteed, obviously, but we are seeing an uptrend in the market. Here's one. Here's one of the reasons why I'm I'm starting to become more bullish on the market, and it has to do basically with the S and P 500. Of course, this is the uh, index that uh, many of the the top stocks are in. And here's here's the here's the thing that is happening in the S and P 500. You'll notice that we are making a move up to the very critical uh, 4,200 mark on the uh, on the S&P, and that is shown right here. Let's just take a look at that. Yeah, there we go. As this as the S&P 500 moves above the 4,200 dollar level, our models are saying that we should be at least. Uh, we should be at least 75% invested in the market. Now, I'm not all. I'm not currently invested at that level, but I'm trying to get there. And here's what I want to show you: uh, what happened today in the market, and uh, kind of where we're at there uh, with with this. Um, so we've basically moved to this very critical confirmed uptrend, and basically it's good time to come out of cash into the market. The question is obviously where are we going to come out of the market what are we going to buy and that's the critical that's the critical issue because you know when, it, when these things happen they tend to happen relatively quickly now here's what i've been investing in currently and uh, let's take a look at the at, at the chart here um i'm in the trade desk ttd i'm also in intel that was up today palantir now this is the one that i put out a video uh just a few minutes ago on this one is an interesting AI technology. This was up significantly, uh, very, 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 very significantly today. I'm also in TJX, which is a, a off-price retailer that's doing quite well. AMD, I bought this today. This was up tremendously um, uh, as well. We're in Google. Uh, that is up as well. And then Tesla, which was up today. So we're in a lot of tech stocks uh, that you know you're probably very familiar with, and they seem to be coming off of bases, and that is a very very interesting thing uh, that's happening with the market. We're seeing stocks move out of bases and into parts of the market that uh, that are that are looking really really good. Um, I wanted to tell you a quick um, uh, a quick thing to, on Palantir today. This one has been moving very very nicely. PLTR is the symbol on it. I'm going to show you where I bought it uh, today, and maybe this might make sense for you as well. This was, uh, let me put this up here. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes I don't get these buttons right. Um, but uh, we had a very nice move. I started my position here basically three days ago, and as you can see, started started buying at 9 uh, nine. Um, Oh, 953 here. We're currently up to 1174. It did back off a little bit uh, in the in the after hours to 1172. But this is a tremendous move, and it, it's moved right above this pivot here. There's a pivot here. This is the dotted line. 1031 is the pivot on this one. Now the question is, can you get into this one? Well, it's it is definitely extended. I mean, it's definitely extended. But if we look at the amount of in, dust, in institutional buying that's coming in, it is lot, it's a tremendous amount of institutional buying that is coming into this issue. And uh, it's up significantly from the averages. So we, we're starting to see a lot of interest in this one. Part of the reason is their, their earnings were up significantly 
Uh, and this one is definitely looking good. Now it is extended right here. So I will be, you have me to be a very cautious on this. I would wait possibly for a pullback on this one, but because uh, we're, we're almost 30% above the 21 day line. But one thing significant did happen with this stock today, and that is it moved beyond the $10 range. And that's super important when, when you're talking about stocks because institutional stocks, uh, the institutions that buy stocks, for instance, some of the hedge funds, and all, they don't buy it unless it's above $10. Well, it just moved above $10. As you can see, that was one of the key levels on the on on that we that we moved to. So definitely something to look at uh, to look at here. I also want to show you another stock that I did buy today, and that's uh, that probably everybody has heard of. It's AMD Advanced Micro Devices, and that would also move through a very very nice pivot today, uh, and I think that's a, that's very very worth looking at as well. Um, the pivot on AMD, let's move over to the charts for everybody on TikTok, is right here at 102.43. As you can see, 102.43, this is the buy point. And then we have moved this blue area in here. This is the, um, th this is the buy zone. Now we're right at the top of the buy zone. So it... It, it's a little. It's getting a little bit late to buy, but as you can see, we closed at 107.93. The after-hours price in this 108.20, uh, and it's moved up 27 cents just in the after-hours. So, no no guarantees here. But this one, I'm going to probably try to buy some more of tomorrow. Let's look at some of the interesting things on this one. It doesn't have a tremendously strong checklist. 67. Normally, I like to see it at least higher than this, but it's sort of hitting on all key elements and this is coming out of a cup basis where the pivot is 102.43 and we're moving up nicely from this now in can slim trading what we want to do is we always want to try to buy it as it moves through the pivot and it definitely did today yesterday we were right at the pivot the day before we were just below the pivot so we there's a there's been a strong movement here notice that the relative strength on this one is 94, which is tremendous because that means it's currently in the top 6% of all stocks out there. So definitely something that you want to take a look at. Before we get into the questions, I'd like to show you several other stocks that I think are setting up nicely. Now, some of these are kind of expensive, so we might not be looking at these uh, as much, but uh, these are some of the ones that I think that we can definitely look at uh, for a potentially good uh, setup. So let's look at the setups here that I've got. These are highly rated stocks. They're all in the chip sector. And in that way, you know, we can we can find ones that are that are quite good. Rambus, uh, this is this uh, uh, Allegro Microsystems, Broadcom, Lattice Semiconductor, Mobileye, NVIDIA. Now the problem with NVIDIA, it's not a problem actually, this has been a hugely successful stock. But unfortunately, it's just a little bit expensive. The ones I'm concentrating on are AMD. And the reason AMD has moved through and it has a big presence in the uh, in it has a big presence in the uh, AI chip space. So this is kind of a sleeper here. But if you'll notice, it's got an A plus rating in terms of accumulation by the fund. So that's a big deal. SMR. Uh, quite good. Relative strength, 92. This actually went up uh, for, from when I took this slide. So this is actually even better than what we've got. So really, really strong. If we look at the fundamentals on AMD, we'll see why there's been so much interest in this stock. So I'm going to go over here to the, um, to the charts here to take a look at AMD. Now, the, the thing about AMD is uh, it has been very, very strong stock. And it has, let's see if I can get this a little bit smaller. Let's see if I can move it down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So we can see it all. Now, interestingly enough, and this is sometimes it's sometimes amazing, the 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 um, the quarter that just ended, their sales were actually down nine percent and their and their profits were down down forty seven percent. But I think that that is going to turn around. And why? 
Well, because the entire group is running very, very strong. If you'll notice, Rambus, uh, uh, NVIDIA, um, Lattice Semiconductor, these are all very strong stocks. So there's money coming into this sector, and it's looking to find what stocks are at the best um, at, at, the, at the best uh, at, at, at the best areas to buy. If we look at the monthly chart, we're looking at the monthly chart here, we'll notice that we're starting to see AMD make a move above, and this is very critical, see this green line here, that is showing strength, and we're seeing a lot of strength in the volume. So at 94 relative strength, AMD right now is a buy, and I think that uh, definitely something that we can definitely make a, a move on. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Let's see if we can go to some questions here. Let's take a question from TikTok. Oh, I got a lot of people on TikTok today. This is great. Um, what are bases? Very, very good question. A base is the way it can slim trading. Uh, the way a base works is that you have a it it it, it will form a uh, it will form a base. Let's let's show you one that has a base that we could that we could definitely take a look at. So let's look at AMD here. And I'll show you what the base is because this is a very interesting question. Good, very, very good question from the audience. So let's see if I can get, there we go. Here, this is a base. Now what happens, a stock, what happens is a stock will go up and then it will hit resistance. And with AMD, you can see there was there was this flat base here. It came up and then it hit this resistance and it couldn't get through, so it pulled back. It went up again. It moved through resistance. It went up to 102. It's pulled back and now it's come up again. So the way a stock trades is that it will move up to resistance, then it will retrace, and then it will if it's really strong, it'll move up beyond the prior resistance like that and then it will it will reach it resistance again it'll pull back so this is how a stock trades it doesn't go up straight it comes up to one resistance and then pushes past second resistance that's how it works so this is the case with amd the reason i get excited when i see this is because typically the stock will come up to the resistance pull back come up to the resistance pull back and now it's come through this resistance again. So it's going to make a trip. If the market stays strong, it's going to make a trip probably up to about 130, as you can see there. So that's what a base is. That's an excellent, excellent question. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, when did you say to enter Palantir? Well, the best time to have entered Palantir was when I did it. I'm not saying that, that that's that's not I, that sounds conceited. I don't want to say that. Uh, but I've watched these very closely. I have watch lists of stock. Uh, let's take a look. The best time now. I entered Palantir right here at nine fifty-three. That was on the seventeenth. That was yesterday. The reason I did was because, like we were saying, what the way a stock works is it moves up to a it moves up to a buy point ten thirty-one in the case of Palantir, and then it pulls back. This is what they call a base. This is what they call a base. And then it comes up, and then if it then it comes up to the, the pivot, it comes up to the pivot, it gets resistance, so it pulls back, and then if there's enough interest in it, and then it moves past that base. And that's exactly what happened with Palantir. With Palantir, I was able to start buying it at 953. Why? Because it came up and then it pulled back, and then I bought it at the index line, the 21 day moving average. I have a, there's a, this is a, I know this is a very, very quick way of saying that, but it pulled up. So the correct buy point for Palantir at this point, let's take a look at it. The correct, the, the correct buy point on this one would have been anything past 1031. Now the problem is it's moved up. And so it's going to pull back again a little bit and it's going to pull down probably closer to this 21 day line. So the next time, if this pulls back, that's where you, that's when you want to start buying it. You want to buy it within 5% of that 21-day line if you can. Now, that's not so easy. That's why hopefully you'll watch the show, and I'll try to tell you when I'm buying it uh, at that level. So 
I entered I entered Palantir at 9.53. I then pyramided and made several buys, and my average price is right about the is right about 10.30. About about ten thirty. That's my average price because the way that you pyramid into a stock is that you buy it a little bit below the buy point. You buy about fifty percent there. Then, as it moves to the pivot, you buy another twenty five percent. And then, if it moves beyond the pivot, you buy another twenty five percent for a hundred percent in. So, when I'm talking about positions, that's what I'm saying. I start with a half position, then go to a half a, a, a quarter position and a quarter position. So that. That's how you pyramid into the, the issue. But Palantir looks like it's making a move. So we'll see what happens with Palantir. All right, let's take another question. Thank you so much for everybody taking a look here. All right. Uh, okay. Um, oh, waiting. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Appreciate it. Always. Let's look at the XLE and the oil stocks. This is for Charles. Um, and let's take a look at the XLE. Now, the XLE for everybody out there is an ETF, an exchange-traded fund, uh, that covers the larger oil companies typically, and that is primarily Exxon and Chevron. Those are the two, the two biggies that are in the XLE. But let's look at kind of what's happening. You know, we've been having this kind of downward trend on oil, and, uh, you know, I can't, I always, you know, I never can quite figure it out, but uh, basically what's going on there is that you know, we broke below that 20, that, that uh, we, we broke below that critical uh, 200 day line. Now, here's the thing. I typically don't, I typically like to get out of stock if, or, or an ETF, if the 50 day line moves below that 200 day line. If that happens, that typically indicates, and of course, it, you know, everything is easy in, in, in hindsight. We're looking at very easy, but that indicates a weakening of, of the, the weakening of the stock. So anytime you see a, the, the, this is a very quick way of doing it. Any time you see the, 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 the 50 day line move below that 200 day line, that's where you want to be concerned and potentially reduce your position. Now, currently the XLE is in a, is in a range and the range it's called the consolidation and it goes on the low side here of about a, a of, of about 76.36 down here to a high of 94.71. So it's in this range. Unfortunately, that currently is in a downward trend. So I've heard doing a lot of doodling on the screen here, but it's moving down and it's looking like it's getting it's gonna get it gonna get in floor. Now I suspect that we're gonna see we're gonna we're gonna see the XLE bounce and at about 76. So if you're in it, you you probably you know you probably don't want to get out of it totally. You might want to sell half your position, but you may not want to get out of it totally because I do see some support at about 76. So that's where I see the support in in the XLE. So that's what I would do. I would uh, you know you know obviously exposure is key here, uh, but I do think that if the market moves higher, we're likely to get a bounce. Now. This is why relative strength is so important. Currently, the XLE only has relative strength of, of 38. It's deteriorated tremendously, uh, and, but I suspect that we're going to get a bounce here probably in the next few weeks. That's my guess. Uh, it's just, a, it, again, it's all a guess. All right. Um, let's, yeah, NVIDIA is a rocket ship. Let's look at NVIDIA. This is the one that got away. I wish I could have bought this. I was just, uh, I was just trying you know, to find a place that I could buy this because, boy, I tell you, NVIDIA just didn't give any ground. It didn't give any opportunities hardly to get in. I mean, it's just, oops, it's just been a rocket ship. Let's take a look at NVIDIA here. Yeah, just no, no basis at all. Look at this. Just straight up the 21-day line. Look at that. Just up the 21-day line. Now, here's the thing I want to show you again, and, and obviously – Everything is easy in, uh, you know, hindsight's 2020. But look at this, and this definitely shows it. Um, with NVIDIA, we had the 50-day line move from below the 200-day line to above the 200-day line. That was the signal to buy. That was the only buy signal that we had. Amazing. 
See, basically, since since 187, that was the really the last real signal. The re real last real bit buy signal was right here. Man, I tell you, and I missed it, of course, because <laughs> I was all bummed out because the market was going south. But basically, way back here, you know, way way back here, that was the buy right there. It was it was basically in mid January, and if I had bought it here. And I did buy it here, but then I, I took my profit. See, I, I bought it on, on, on you know last year, but I didn't hang on to it. I should have. Now I made a buy here, but then I took my profits. <laughs> so there you go. So it's it's really interesting. Nvidia has been an absolute rocket ship. Now you can see that was that was a that was a good place to buy it. Basically at the twenty one day line there, and it's just gone up ever since. Hasn't really given us an opportunity. Now, if we want to get in on this one, and it does, it just looks like it's going to the moon, and it's, I'm afraid the rocket ship's going to go without me on this time. It's all up and after hours. The only place that we really could buy it would be close to that 21-day line. It's extended right now. It's 10% above the 21-day line. If it comes back within 5% of that 21-day line, that's where we can buy it. But until that happens, we're just kind of stuck watching Look at this relative strength 98 that means that it's in the top two percent of all stocks so i agree with you i wish i could have got <laughs> one but you know i i was able to get in on amd and amd is still in a base so it's still possible with amd and i just think that right now you know we just gotta we just gotta kind of look to wait to see uh nvidia form another base and if it if it forms another base then we can get then we can jump in but if it doesn't form that base, you know, we just got to kind of wait. And it stinks because, you know, I would have liked to have gotten that one. So, but that's fantastic that you brought that up. All right. Thanks. All right. Let's look at the spider. This is the key. This is why, you know, why is everyone going into the market right now? Well, not everyone, but the institutions. Let's look at the spider, SPY. And, of course, this is the ETF that covers the... Um, S&P 500. So let's take a look at this one. Let's go over here. Yeah, there we go. All right. So the spider currently uh, 419 and after hours 420. So it's very, very strong. The key level is 420 on the spider. And the reason why is because this essentially is the higher high. There you go. So as it moves beyond that, because remember, the way, the way a stock trains is it'll move up to resistance down, forming the base, and then it will come up. Now, it doesn't matter if it's an ETF or an individual stock. They all trade like this. So it comes down, comes right up. Now, if it can go past that 420, then it's in a new, it's, a, it's in a whole new level. Okay, then, then, it, then it's in a whole new level. We can see this back here if we look kind of back on the Wayback Machine. So let's take a look here. We had a situation where this happened once before. There you go. So it came up, but it didn't. It didn't get through, and so it. But it's, but it's, it punched up to a higher high. That's why this is a critical level. If we can get through this, we're likely to go all the way up to about 4:30. So we're likely to go all the way up here if we can get to that level. So looking really, really good on that. All right, um, let's let's see if we can get another question for. Uh, TikTok, let's look at Oracle. This is for TikTok. And uh, let's see if we can go over to the Oracle chart really quick. O-R-C-L. And this one has been doing well, well, too. I don't own Oracle. I do like the stock a lot. Let's take a look at the chart on it. There we go. All right. So what's happened is we've come above this. Um, oh, that's, the, that's the spider. You want to look at the this is we're looking here at the chart for Oracle and let's see if I can get that up for everybody. There we go. Now we didn't we had a very now this is a very large cup with handle, sort of a huge the pivot on Oracle came at 9172 and then it pulled back. This is the handle. It pulled back up, it pulled back on the handle. There we go. And then it came above the handle basically in mid March. So that that gave us just that was the opportunity in mid March was to buy it right about here. 
Now, of course, we're looking at this, you know, in retrospect, so it's it's difficult. But you'll notice it came up and then it got rid of resistance at about 98, then pulled back to that 21-day line, came up again. So right now, we probably, you know, if, we, if, we, if we're going to buy Oracle, we're probably a little bit too late. We want to wait for a pullback. Well, we could buy Oracle. Theoretically, we could buy it because it's 7 5.74% above the 21-day line. But what we really want to do is to see if there's any pullback. But we could buy it here. It's a li it's almost extended, but not quite. So we could potentially buy Oracle here, but it's probably going to pull back probably to about 100. So the thing about the, the thing about buying it, Oracle, we want to try to see if we get a little bit of a pullback, but 100 would be a very, very good place to buy it if you could do that. So Oracle is looking very good as well. It's also in the ascendancy uh, as a stock, so looking very, very strong. Okay, let's see. Amazon, this is another one. It, it's funny. All the stocks seem to break out at the same time, and we've been waiting, waiting, waiting for this. But let's look at Amazon. This is another one I'm not in, but I wish I was, and that's Amazon. And let's see if we can get a AMZN. Only one of the fangs that I'm in is Google, and I'm in Google. I did start buying that a few days ago. This one is showing also some strength as well. Again, we're still not quite there, but if you'll notice, this is the 50-day line here, and this is the 200-day line, and it looks as if the 50-day is going to move above the 200. And as we talked about this earlier, this is a very bullish signal in the market. So whenever the 50-day line moves above the 200-day line, that is a buy signal. That's a, one of the other buy signals. It's showing strength. And that's definitely the case with, with, uh, with Amazon in the last few days. Uh, but this is not as strong as a base, but it is a good place to be. Now, the higher high, if we look at this, is about 114. So the fact that it was able to come above that level right here means that's a very bullish signal. All right, we're still a little bit extended, 8.78% above the 21-day line. So the thing to do is to wait for a little bit of a pullback. If it does, it may not give us a chance, but really good stocks don't give you that many chances to get in. But if we do get a pullback to about 116, that would be a good place. But we could still buy it here. I just wouldn't buy a full position here. Now, what do I mean by a full position? If you take your portfolio, let's say you have a $8,000 portfolio, and you divide it by eight, the number of pizza slices, that's the way I think of it, you get eight positions. When I'm talking about a half position, I'm talking about one sixteenth. So you, when you, you go in, typically, the way you work it is, below, when you're starting to ac uh, accumulate, this would be below the pivot. So if we were, if we were doing this, if you're buying this correctly, we would buy this below one fourteen. We buy, we would buy 50%. So we'd buy one half position. Then as it moved to the pivot, we would buy another quarter. And then as it moved above, we would buy another quarter. Now, unfortunately, I missed this train. I wasn't on this train. But what train that I did get on that you might like is Google. And there's two classes of Google stock. There's the A shares and there's the C shares. Now, I currently like to trade the C shares, but it doesn't really matter because they're both essentially the same. Now, what happened with me is that, as you can see, on the 10th, uh, on, on, on the 10th there, I bought a half position at 110.64. Okay? And as you can see, that's as it moves right above that pivot. So we sort of have this, this base here. It moves beyond that. That's when I started acquiring, uh, uh, acquiring a one-half position. Then as it moves up, that's where I'm adding. So I added, I couldn't, I, I, I needed to get two ads here, but I only got one. I bought, started buying at 110, and then I, uh, then, then, uh, then I, and then I bought the rest at 122. Now, because I bought more at 120, I mean, at more at 110, I was able to get in there. So I had a nice, I've had a nice run on that one as well, and that is showing strength. Now the question is, can we still make a move on that. Well, it's a little bit extended. It's a little bit far above that 112.42. That's really where we should be buying close to. So we're going to have to wait on that one a little bit. I can't really buy any more of it right now. So 
that's kind of how the breakout works. So <laughs> that's kind of how, how, it, how it works. All right, let's look at Boeing. That's an interesting stock to look at for Sandeep. I haven't been trading any of the Dow stocks. And of course, BA, Boeing, it's the largest exporter in the United States. So it has been kind of doing interesting things. Now, here's the thing about Boeing. It's below its pivot. The pivot on this one is 120, it is 221. Uh, and currently, um, now the interesting thing about Boeing, I've traded this before, but I was trading it. I actually was way back here. I was shorting it, but now it's starting to make its move. But really, I don't think unless it breaks above 120, uh, 221, that would give us a, a concrete buy signal. Now, it is in an upward trend, which is a good thing. Uh, as you can see, so it's kind of come down, it's gotten support at about 192, and then it's moving up. And the question is, can it can it break through this 221? I don't, I'm not as confident on it, but it does have a very strong relative strength, 92. So I'm not really trading as many of the Dow stocks as I'm trading in the NASDAQ. So with the NASDAQ, that's, that's, um, that's where I'm trading most of it. But here's the thing. We could definitely buy it here, believe it or not. And here's why. The 21-day line is basically at 203. So the fact is, at 207, we could buy this. We could definitely buy this. We could start with a half position. And then if it moves up to 221, buy another quarter position. And if it moves past that, another quarter position. So definitely you could buy this one. It definitely has the strength. That's absolutely the case. So let's look at the checklist here. The checklist is really, really good. Um, we've got the relative strength above uh, above 80. This is what I was talking about. So this is excellent. And of course, you know, this is one of the this is one of the great uh, stocks of all time, Boeing. But um, and uh, this is not a necessarily a bad. This is not a bad place to buy it. Here's the thing: I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't expose too much to it. But this might be a good place to, to buy uh, Boeing as it has moved up and then if it if, and if it moves above 221 that's where we could probably add another quarter position so start with a half position go to a quarter and then if it moves above that 221 go all the way all in with one full position all right let's look at costco costco c-o-s-t is the symbol for costco c-o-s-t uh and this is a retail stock so I only have currently one retail stock, and that's TJX, which is um, uh, which is TJ Maxx, sort of an off-price retailer. Let's see if I can get. Uh, let's see if it will let me go back to that. Let's see. I'm going to get the chart up here for everybody on TikTok. Okay. Yep, there we go. All right. So this is Costco, and as you can see, I've traded this one in the past. Not currently in it. Uh, let's see if we can get it over there. Yeah, I'm not currently in Costco, uh, but let's take a look at the chart. And here's the thing about Costco. I It looks like the the 50-day line is starting to make a move above that 200-day line. So that's significant. But I wouldn't buy this one. Why? Because if we look at the relative strength, you notice how that's pointing down. So this is losing relative strength against the rest of the market. So here's the thing. I would watch this, this one, but I wouldn't buy it because, first of all, it's below the 200-day line. We don't want to typically buy below there. And also, we, the relative strength is in a downward trend. We want to wait until the relative strength is 80 and moving above the 200-day line. So that's going to give us a good opening there for this one. But right now, I just think you've got to put, I just think kind of sit on your hands and wait on this one because it just is not giving us an opportunity. So I would watch this Costco. I would not buy it at this level. Uh, but let's look at one that I do have, and I did, and I did start a position in. That's TJX, and that's t uh, that's a retail. They have a number of different brands. Okay, that is TJX. This is one I did buy. Now, the interesting thing about this one, this is a little bit spiky. I don't know if that's a word or not, uh, but this is this is a little bit. But this is an interesting one, the way it trades. Now, I did buy this on the 17th. I did enter at 78.71. Now, we're currently at 79.44, so that's looking pretty good. 
This is coming out of a base. Now, what am I doing here? Well, I'm going to draw a line, and this is going to connect the high points together. Now, this is the reversal line. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set an alert on that line. There we go. So here's the thing. When I bought, as you can see when I bought, it moved above that reversal line. So that is, it went from a downward trend to an upward trend. Now, it's pulled back a little bit since then. It went way up and then it pulled way back to that to that, to that 21 day line, but it's now moving up. So this one is looking good. Now let's compare this. Let's compare Costco with TJX to see which of the two, see if I made the right choice. Now, I really like Costco. I think it's a great company, um, and, but I think TJX might be performing better. And what I'm going to do is we're going to look at the stock since the first of the year. There we go. And that gives us, hopefully, oops, TJX is the symbol. And then we're going to put in Costco, C-O-S-T. There we go. So actually, I stand corrected. Costco has outperformed. Uh, Costco has outperformed TGX. So let's show the comparison here. So I stand corrected here. If we had been playing the since the first of the year, uh, as you can see, Costco, oops, as you can see, Costco has performed better than the one I have, which is TJX. Now, I just want to, just for fun, I want to look at since basically the beginning of April. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm just going to put it at the beginning of April. There we go. So they're a little bit closer since the beginning of April, and TJX is a little bit, not much, but it is outperforming. Now, the great thing about Costco is the reason I bought TJX was because it was setting up very, very nicely. But Costco is very good. It just, it just doesn't have as good of setup right now. It didn't have as good a setup as TJX. But this gives you essentially a, um, a kind of a look at it um, comparing both. So they're, 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 they're just starting to move up. Costco in the last, since April, it's a little bit less than 100. It's a 101, so it's pretty much flat. TJX, not too much more about 102. So in terms of in terms of the price. So um, yeah, they're looking both looking very good. Let's take a look at uh, US 30. All right, I'm looking at TikTok here. Uh, what are basis? We talked a little bit about that. Uh, let's see if we can. Ah, let's look at Tesla. No, that's Baba. Let's look at Baba. That This is one that has unfortunately been, I think it's been in a decline. So let's look at Baba. Of course, this is Alibaba. And uh, this is also a proxy for the Chinese market, uh, for the people that trade it. I don't trade it right now. I have traded it in the past, but I have not traded this probably in a few years. Uh, and it's still, it's starting to make a, make an upward trend. So let's let's look at it. And share the screen. There we go. So if we're looking at Alibaba, we are still below that 200-day line. And we definitely, here's what happened. It came up to that 200-day line, and then it got rejected. 38 relative strength. So I am not, unfortunately, interested right now in Baba because it's at the low part of its trading range. Now, if it falls below here and gets resistance, then... I just don't think we can do anything with it, but we don't want to trade it. Why? Because it's weak relative to the rest of the market. It's currently 38 relative strength, which means that it has only 64% of the stock market is doing better than the stock, even though they had good earnings. So I would avoid right now, I would avoid BABA. Uh, it's just, you know, right now it's not relative to the rest of the market. It just isn't doing as, as well. So I would avoid. I would be avoiding Baba for right now. Uh, that's that's kind of that's kind of where I would that's kind of where I would be with Ali Baba. All right. 
Um, Roman, thank you, Roman. Uh, ASML and LCRX, these are both chip equipment companies. Um, ASML is fabulous stock. AMSL is one of the most significant companies in the world that nobody's ever heard of. It's a Dutch company. And they make the equipment that makes most of the very, very high-tech chips. The exports of these machines is a critical situation for really the West because these are the machines, of course, that Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing has. So this is a critical company. This is one of the most important companies in the world that nobody has ever really that it isn't really in the know has really heard of so asml is the company that makes the that makes the machines that make the chips and it is absolutely state of the art all right the question is is it viable well that's a good question the relative strength of amsl has moved beyond 90 which is very very good anything below anything above 80 is looking very strong also, let's look at the volume signature on this one. We definitely have some increasing volume. This is this is institutional money coming in to the stock. You'll notice how it's come. It's a cup with handle and it's moved above the buy point. The buy point on this one is 683 and it's up after hours. So this is absolutely viable. Now, the question is, how close to the 21 day line is it? Well, it is a little bit extended, 6.82% above the 21 day line which makes it a little bit extended. 5% is typically what you want to do, but this is showing very, very strong action. And so it's definitely something that we want to look at in light of the market today. As you can see, we're, we're, this, we're going out here, basically uh, longer term, this is the weekly chart. And this, this has a blue dot on it, which means that there was significant, there's significant action here. Now, you'll notice that the, the earnings were up on uh, on ASML. Now, here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing. This moved on earnings today. And the reason it moved on earnings is because we are seeing the reshoring of the semiconductor industry to the United States and to Europe. And that means that ASML will be selling a lot of their equipment. Now, interestingly enough, these machines cost like a you know, close to a billion dollars each. It's just, it's an absolutely amazing thing. You should Google ASML because this is the, probably the most critical company in the world right now. And you should definitely look at this, but the companies that are ordering their machines are Intel, Texas Instruments, and some of the other ones. Now, up until recently, TSMC, which is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, had been the company that had most of the orders for this. Uh, this, of course, Taiwan Semi is moving their productions primarily to Arizona from Taipei. And this is because of the Chinese pressure on Taiwan. So very interesting company, ASML Dutch company, but very, very involved with Silicon Valley. So if we take a look at them, and let's take a look at the fundamentals on ASML. And what I'm doing is I'm just moving it over to the fundamental. So let's see if I can take off the, take this off so that you can see what I'm talking about here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, because it's sometimes hard to see the fundamentals on it, but they came through earnings very, very well. You'll notice that their, their sales were up 87% and their profits 180. Now look at this. We had a negative quarter, negative quarter, positive quarter. So we're selling a lot of, a lot of very, very, very powerful uh, action on this. Look at this P.E. ratio. Now, this is a high-tech company and it has an extremely low P.E. ratio, 37 for a company like this. So absolutely amazing. The return on the equity of this company, 56%. So if you have the money, this is a very expensive stock, but if you have the money, <laughs> this one is well worth your time. Now, let's take a look at, uh, and I definitely, it's viable right now. So let's take a look at... Um, Let's, let's also look uh, quickly at LAM Research. This is LRCX. Now, this is not, they don't quite do the same thing as, uh, as ASML, but LAM Research is also very, very critical in the whole infrastructure of 
the ship building. And every time we move to a different form factor, and if you're familiar with Moore's Law, uh, this company typically gets orders. Why? Because they do, they have make machines that actually create the extremely, uh, the extremely, uh, um, they, what they do is they do, uh, they, they, it's a planar, they have a machine that does planarization that makes, in, in the building of semiconductors, you have to make, you have to make the wafers very, very, very flat. And this machine does it. And so every time there is a change in the form factor of the semiconductor, this company typically gets orders. Now, look at this. This is fascinating, too. 93 relative strength. Again, extremely strong. Now, this is moved, unfortunately, above the buy point. The buy point on this one, uh, the buy point on this one really, uh, was, you know, was right at about 515. It's at 595. So on this one, I think you just got to wait for a pullback. Let's see. If, let's look at the daily chart to see if there's anywhere we can get in. On this one, this is another great company, uh, Lamb Research is the name of it. Um, it's unfortunately it it moved right up almost to six hundred buy point on it, five forty eight. So we we formed this. This is a consolidation. That's what this space is called, and it's moved above the higher high on a consolidation. But unfortunately, this one right now is extended, and we can definitely take see that by looking at. The 21 day line, and that is 11.5% above, so that is extended. So, if we're looking at the two stocks, let's compare their, their performance. And this this is interesting, at least in, from my way of looking at it, because they're both in the chip equipment area. Let's look at LAM. I'm going to do this as of April. And let's look at. Um, a S and L. All right. So if we're looking specifically at comparing both of these companies, and they're both excellent, uh, let's compare them. Okay. So this is the comparison between the two stocks since April. Uh, LRCX, which is LAM Research. And ASML. Um, Lamb Research has been the winner. Look at that. It's up 113%, just 13% just since April 1st. Uh, and, and, this, and ASML is up about 3%. So definitely Lamb is the one that you want. It's an expensive stock, but it's definitely the one you want. Out of the two, it has outperformed ASML, at least in the short term. So... All right, well, we're almost at the end, and I, I, we're going to a lot of detail here. Hey, Jen, what are your thoughts on gold stocks? Buy the dip? Well, think about buying the dip. You know, I sold. <laughs> I sold. I had um, a stock that I that was looking really, really good, a, um, AEM, and I got stopped out of it today. I want to show you the AEM because I got stopped out of it. I'm just going to have to wait. Uh, I'm going to wait to, for this to turn around. What happened here is that I was in AEM. You see, we came right above that, right above that pivot, 59. That's kind of where I started to go in, and then my stop loss was right here. Okay, and what happened was it came up to the pivot, and then it tried to move above it. It didn't get traction, and it pulled back. So I'm going to wait on this one to see if we get a rebound. If this starts moving above. The, the the 50 the above the 50 day line then i'm going to get more interested in it but here's the thing this is why relative strength is so important 87 even though it has a very strong relative strength look at the nose dive that it took look at this relative strength line it moved way way down so here's the thing i wouldn't buy this unless it was closer to the 20, the 50 day line so where i would buy this is if it can move above about 54 stay there that's where i would buy it but right now it's at 53.73 so if you're going to buy this on the dip and i don't necessarily think that's a bad idea wait wait until it shows some strength because right now it's in a downward trend wait for it to move higher um who knows i mean if if we don't have a debt settlement we're going to get the you know gold is going to go up again so gold is a tough is a tough thing to trade again i was stopped out today in, from aem so um 
I, I, I definitely have faith in the gold stocks, but you got to protect your capital. And so that's why I always, I never let them run more than 7% down. I'm out because you can always buy them again. There's no problem doing that. But when you, when you buy, uh, but so, so right now you've got, we got to wait for another upward trend in gold in order to buy. So I would just watch this one for now. Well, thank you so much for everybody watching. We need to talk about Tesla. Um, lots of Tesla fans. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't talk about Tesla, and I own Tesla, by the way, today. So let's take a look at Tesla, um, and that we'll talk about that really quick. And that'll probably be it for today. But uh, let's see if we can get Tesla in there. I am also, I want to add that I am a Tesla fan, too. I, I, I love the stock. I love the company. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just the question is when to buy it and when is the correct time to buy it. That's always the issue with all stocks. So, I mean, it could be the greatest company in the world, but if it's not at the right price, then it can be tough. So let's look at Tesla. Oops. There we go. So this is Tesla. Did I get, did I get that up on the screen? Yeah, let's get that up. All right. All right, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for holding on there. I appreciate it. All right, with Tesla, we are still, and this is not a good place to buy it. I did, I bought it, but, you know, I bought it because I'm, I'm, normally I wouldn't have bought this, but I did. I like the company. This 200-day line is, we really probably shouldn't be buying below about 200. Now, I bought it. Why? Because, well, Tesla's special, <laughs> but it's in a range, and the range is from here to here. It's from about 152 on up to about 207. That's the range that it's trading in. Now, it's made its move down. It hit the bottom basically right about the third week of April, and then it's been bouncing up ever since. So it does look like it's getting strong. It's moved past the 10-day line. It's moved past the 21-day line, and hopefully now – it will move past the 50-day line. Now, this is going to be the key. If it can move above, if it can move above 177 and hold it, then we're definitely in a, a bounce and we're an upward trend. At least we're good until about 207. All right. So it definitely has made this move higher. Typically, what will happen in a consolidation is that it will oscillate in this channel and then. Uh, and, and if everything is moving strong. Now, here's the problem. Normally, I would not buy the stock, but Tesla is sort of a special case in my book. Relative strength on this is only 23, so it is not performing well against the market. Here's the reason that it's not performing well against the market. Tesla has a lot of what they call overhead supply. And let's take a look at that really quickly. This line here, See if I can put that in there. It's called the overhead supply line. This is 18 months. So from here back to here, that's 18 months. If you'll notice, if we draw the line across here, right? We're right here at about at about 180. So I'm going to draw this line. Oh, if you'll notice, and that's not the greatest line. If you'll notice, there's a lot of people that bought Tesla above 180. So as it comes up to 180, there's a lot of pressure to sell. A lot of people will sell to break even you see that's what this that's what this uh one this that's what this overhead supply so this is the problem this is what's killing tesla moving higher is we haven't cleared out this overhead supply yet there's just a lot of people that have been holding they've wrote, wrote, wrote it all the way down to about 100 you know i actually was i actually did a little bit of trading down here at the bottom but now it's starting to move higher and, but we still have this overhead supply. So this is why we probably want to be buying it carefully here because we haven't gotten rid of the overhead supply. When this overhead supply is gotten rid of, I think it will move higher. But right now we have to be very, very careful. Now that said, <laughs> I bought Tesla and I bought it several days ago. And the reason I bought it, why? Well, if we look back at the daily chart, this is why and I'll show you on the chart. All right, here we go. All right, there we go. If you'll notice, it 
got support at that 21 day line. That's sort of where I bought it, that 21 day line, and now it's moving up to the to the 50 day line. So I, I'm very, I'm bullish on Tesla, but I don't have a huge position in it yet because I want to see it clear out some of the overhead supply and move above about 217. So that's really where we're seeing it the most. All right. Well, thank you so very, very much, everybody. So appreciate you looking at the show. Also, if you could, I want to see if this works. I I, I did I downloaded this uh, this GIF and I want to see if it works. So, you know, we're on YouTube, so please like and subscribe. So please like and subscribe this one, and then also smash the like button. I'd like to do that, and also subscribe. Easy to do. Um, you can just do it easily by going to www.dallastradingfloor.com. Uh, and uh, so uh, this is the YouTube address. So please like it at this address, www.youtube.com slash Dallas Trading Floor. So uh, until tomorrow at uh, 5 o'clock, I will see you. I, I will see you again. So smash the like button, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Happy trading.